All right, we are live. So welcome back to Dapp University. So today we got a lot to talk about in our live stream. We're talking about a big hack that happened yesterday in the crypto space. And the underlying problem of this hack is actually something that, you know, a lot of people end up falling for. And I'm going to talk about how to, you know, protect yourself from this. We're going to reverse engineer what happened and say like, hey, you know, crypto is a crazy place. There's a lot of opportunity here, but it's kind of the Wild West and you have to, you know, be smart in how you uh, you know, conduct yourself. So I'm going to give you some tips on that in this video. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of other crazy stuff that's happened in the space since yesterday. Uh, we're going to look at Elon Musk, you know, buying Twitter, what that could mean for Web 3.0. Uh, I talk about a potential crypto airdrop uh, later in this uh, live stream, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, we're going to check out the crypto markets, check the blockchain, look for all the trends that are happening right now, uh, answer some of your questions in the live chat here, and a whole lot more. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so we got people jumping in the chat here. We got Culturize, Lee, Dirk, Dale. Uh, Michael, Newbie, JBA, Nick, uh, Eric, uh, Fearless, Francis, Frank, Daniel, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about a big hack that happened yesterday um, that also was associated with a big crypto scam that uh, you got to watch out for. <laughs> okay, so I uh, definitely want to be sensitive to anybody who was affected by this hack, all right? Uh, or anybody's community that was affected by this hack. But there's a lot of learnings that we have to take from this type of thing if you want to succeed in the crypto space. So yesterday, uh, NFTs were stolen after Board Ape Yacht Club, Instagram, and Discord were hacked. <laughs> okay, so what happened here? So basically, uh, someone got possession of the social media accounts for the Board Ape Yacht Club NFT collection. It looks like the Discord here as well. I was mostly just aware of what happened with the Instagram. But basically uh put up a um put up put up a, a fake link to a different website that was, you know, claiming to give them some sort of benefit. I haven't seen the exact uh, details on what they were trying to do. It looks like it was a special mint event or some sort of airdrop or something like that. Uh, but the underlying problem is this basically you know, they uh, gained control of the accounts and said, hey, you know, here's here's an official post from Board Ape Yacht Club that takes you to a website that lets you do something with your MetaMask wallet uh, to get some sort of benefit, like it's either a mint or an airdrop. And then what happens behind the scenes is they, they point that to maybe a different smart contract or something like that, um, where you're signing a message that lets them take money out of your wallet, okay? So, or money, I say, in this case, NFTs. So we're going to talk about that here in a minute and how to protect yourself from that. But that's essentially what happened. Uh, the details may be a little bit, you know, a little bit different from that. But that's 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 the essence of what happened. So we can see uh, sort of the summary here. Um, you know, they follow up to this. Hey, there's no mint going on today. <laughs> do not click anything. Do not click anything in their wallets. Uh, basically... Uh, those who have wallets who click the link have been compromised. A series of board apes and mutant apes have been transferred to new wallets. Uh, at the time of writing, the estimated uh, 24 board apes and 30 mutant apes were stolen, according to the OpenSea transfer. So you can just get on OpenSea and like, look at the NFTs that were taken out of the wallet and sent to the particular address that they approved them for. The total value of the 54 NFTs based on the floor price extrapolated out is about $13.7 million dollars. Um, so the, basically they follow up to so things that scope's a little smaller than that, but that was the estimate right here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was bad news. So first of all, let, let's talk about how to protect yourself from this. So first and foremost, anytime that you see, uh, somebody like posting from an official social media account, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's, a, that that's who has access to the account currently and that that's what you should trust for every single thing. Uh, in crypto, okay, you really should use the blockchain itself as the final source of truth. And we've seen this type of stuff happen before where like people get access to Twitter accounts for some of the, you know, like in, you know, internal Twitter hacks where people get massive accounts that are compromised and they have like crypto scams that are like, hey, send, you know, all this money to this crypto address, okay. We've seen it from like uh, Joe Biden's account. We've seen it from like other massive, massive, massive accounts, okay. So just because something's coming from a social media account doesn't necessarily mean that's actually the person who's doing it. Okay. So, uh, but so how do you protect yourself even further? So what happened here was essentially they had a mint, you know, a special minting event on a website, um, 
where you know you're supposed to cl click a button on the page and sign the transaction with MetaMask. It's going to let you do this mint or get this airdrop or whatever it is, right? But it's it's a it's a it's a scam, right? Basically, you're not actually doing that. What you're doing is signing a message that lets them take NFTs out of your wallet. So how does that work? Well, essentially, you know, NFTs um, have how the NFT standard works with ERC seven twenty one tokens is like it's a smart contract and it's got different functions on it. It's got a function that lets you transfer NFTs out of your wallet if you're the person that owns it so you can like transfer it from yourself okay but you can also let other people um do that on your behalf so let's say like you wanted to sell an uh, NFT on an open sea marketplace it needs that functionality to let somebody else take it out of your wallet and sell it okay ERC20 tokens work the same way uh, and so what you did to do is essentially approve that transaction first like you have to sign a you have to you have to call a function that signs a message that basically says hey i'm going to let this particular person spend nfts on my behalf because i want to sell it like on a marketplace or something okay and so that's essentially what they're doing in this case they're 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 posting this fake link that says hey if you sign this message um you know then <laughs> we're going to mention nft but really what that message is or that function that you're calling is an approval message to let them take nfts out of your wallet okay so that's what the scam is the scam is like you're, you're approving somebody else to take money out i know it's crazy that you might think that there's even smart contracts that let people take money out of your wallet uh but that's what it's there for so that you can like sell it on marketplaces or something like that okay so um the common misconception with this is like a hardware wallet is not going to protect you from this okay um most people think that hard like hardware wallets often give people a false sense of security because it basically makes makes them think that they can't lose money in any way in crypto that's well, really not true okay sometimes hardware wallets make this problem worse <laughs> because if you've ever tried to read like you know the uh the digest of what you're signing on a hardware wallet it's completely unintelligible okay it's like this massive like hex data um and that doesn't always make this you know problem better now not all hardware wallets are created equally okay some are, are better than others in, in in terms of the transparency for what the users uh you know seeing but sometimes it, it makes it even harder so what what can you do well at the end of the day you want to make sure that you know the recipient of what it, you you want to try to find with complete confidence like what the function is that you're calling whenever you sign these messages and what contract it's going to okay so part of it's like you know who what contract are you interacting with if you look at that contract address is it actually an official verified address from this project okay and you know this is where some coding skills will definitely help you go a long way in crypto uh some of the reasons i say that you know learning blockchain development is not just about you know not just for people who are trying to you know break in the industry uh, but for people who want to like stay safe in crypto, if you can read a smart contract, at least at the very least say that like, hey, this function does what I think it's supposed to do. Like an approval function is pretty easy to spot, okay, because of what's happening under the hood. So you can look at the contract source code verification on Etherscan if you just have basic coding skills to see whether it's an approval transaction or not and whether or not this function could take funds out of your wallet. So um, that's that's really how you stay safe is to look at the chain itself, make sure that it's an official address that you are interacting with, and then try to see what the function is that you're doing. And you'll be able to tell that from your MetaMask what the function is, uh, what's asking you to do. But you have to actually look at the chain yourself to verify the source code is doing what you think it is. If it looks like it says, you know, <laughs> you just approve it for a random person to take money out of your wallet, don't do that, okay? Um, and also, at the end of the day, like, Let's say you don't go through all those steps. In the very least, like you could just wait, <laughs> just wait and see if the social media post looks like it's legit, uh, or if it's, you know, a scam. Even if it's from an official account. But how do we know this isn't a bad actor? Look at some of the Ether scans, the transactions of the tokens were sent to the waltz with the domain instead to blame. Uh, well, I think it is a bad actor. So basically trust no one in crypto. Well, you definitely want to have a healthy degree of 
uh, caution when you're talking about anonymous actors, for sure. Okay, so let's look at a bunch of other stuff that's happened in this space since yesterday. Yesterday was actually a pretty exciting day. Um, we do have the Elon Musk uh, bid for Twitter. Looks like it's, you know, looks like it's got some real steam. Um, so Twitter has officially accepted Elon Musk's $44 billion takeover offer for Twitter. Okay, now we're talking about how this could be big for Web 3.0. Um, so we've been covering this for quite some time on the channel, and it, it's pretty crazy that this is actually, uh, looks like it's going to happen. Now, you have to understand, uh, if you're not familiar with mergers and acquisitions, that this is an offer, its offer has been accepted, okay? Um, there will be some time before this, you know, completes, and we'll just, you know, we have to wait and see and make sure that everything uh, lands as we expect. Okay, so it's not like a done deal yet, but it looks like a good sign. Okay, we don't, and if, it, and if it, assuming that it does become a done deal under the terms that we see here, taking at face value, we don't have the exact timeline how long that's going to take before it's totally in his possession. So, um, so Tesla CEO will pay fifty four point two or five fifty four dollars and twenty cents. Uh, per share for Twitter, uh, the board has put in place a poison pill agreement to hinder the billionaire's plans. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, yeah, this is huge. Uh, why could this be a big deal for Web 3.0? Well, earlier um, on these live streams, I've been kind of speculating about this because before Elon was even talking about this, like talking with, you know, with the CEO of Twitter about buying it, he put out a poll on his Twitter saying, hey, should Twitter algorithm be open source? And, uh, you know, that's what I picked up on and was like, hey, that's, you know, that that looks like, you know, we're moving in the direction of Web 3.0 because, you know, some of the big value propositions, like one of the biggest value propositions of Web 3.0 in the first place is transparency. And if you've been watching this channel at all in the past six months uh, to a year, uh, watching these live streams, I've repeatedly talked about, you know, social media as being a prime candidate for disruption um, with Web 3.0 because of the idea of transparency. So what's one of the biggest problems, you know, with social media and Web 3.0? So, for example, like, you know, whenever you like the algorithm curated, curated timeline, I'm literally just pulling up my timeline right now. I'll just show the tweets. Actually, let me hide my screen, make sure nothing <laughs> crazy pops up sometimes yeah, i pull up twitter and it's like it just pulls up random stuff so i have to make sure it's all good uh, so basically like if i look at my timeline right now it's literally, literally just what i hit when i hit refresh okay this is an algorithmically curated timeline how do i know that this is actually like well, how do i know that this is what the algorithm is really showing me or that the algorithm's any good or not i mean the basic premise is that the algorithm's good at finding what I'm interested in and you know what's engaging and trying to show me that stuff so that it'll keep me on the platform so they can show me ads that I'll just stay engaged with the content all right and retain me as a user so you know that I'm you know, I'm basically the product of the platform because it's free and then you know the ads are kind of what's making money uh, in addition to some other you know revenue drivers okay so at the end of the day the whole all idea is to keep me engaged but now one of the biggest problems with that is uh you know, one of the big downsides is uh, it's not just about keeping people engaged. The the, the threat here is that uh, is the conversation about free speech, okay? And that the algorithm could threaten free speech in some way, um, and that you know it could actively suppress things that they don't want to be shown in the news feed, right? Wherever those topics might be. And there's always, of course, the argument of like, hey, it's not like the wizard behind the curtain threatening free speech, like blacklisting things. It's, it could be that or it could just be basically like how the machine learning models are trained by human bias. Either way, um, you know, the whole idea is that the algorithm is a black box and nobody knows how it works. And so you don't know if like this is, you know, if there's any sort of like suppression going on my timeline. And also, similarly, if you look at the trending headlines, OK, um, you know, if you look over here on my trends, you know, what's happening? how do you know this is actually what's trending on Twitter? Like, what if there's something on here that is like, you know, so, like, again, what, what if there's, 
what if something's promoted on here that's not necessarily trending or likewise what if there's something on there that's you know not being shown that is trending uh that's either trained with a model it's you know trained it has implicit human bias based upon us you know it's trained by a limited section of users that the platform has chosen or if there's like a you know wizard behind the curtain you know censoring stuff out you know, nobody knows for sure but the big problem is transparency nobody knows how the algorithm works so um how could web 3.0 improve that problem well transparency is one of the biggest ways okay so basically yesterday you know elon tweeted out free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and twitter is the digital town square where matters uh vital to the future of humanity are debated so i also want to make twitter better than ever by enhancing their product with new features making the algorithms open source to increase trust defeating the spam bots and authenticating all humans so twitter has tremendous potential i look forward to working with the company and community of users to unlock it okay so um making the op algorithm open source to where people can understand how it works is essentially this step forward in transparency now that is a web 3.0 idea now it doesn't necessarily mean that Twitter's just going to move to using a blockchain for this particular, you know, functionality. And in fact, it's probably not going to, at least not initially, because, frankly, the scalability is really just not there. Um, but that being said, this is a huge win for consumers waking up or end users waking up to the value proposition of Web 3.0 that, hey, because this thing is open source and transparent, you know, at least somebody who knows what they're doing, whether it's a third party or whatever, could audit this algorithm. Um, and that that helps us, you know, sleep at night using a social network where, you know, we don't have to debate whether or not this thing is like suppressing ideas or promoting ideas. And that the end user can see that that is a valuable, you know, it's basically a virtue for uh, web 3.0 based applications or that this is a tipping point for where we want the Internet to go in the first place which sort of wakes people up to seeing the, the greater value proposition of other Web 3.0 solutions built by blockchains, distributed file systems, all that type of stuff. So that's this is a huge win for Web 3.0, even if Twitter doesn't just like start using a blockchain tomorrow or next year. Um, it's it's a big deal. So let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. So, I mean, there's always the counter argument of like, hey, what's going to happen if the algorithm's open source? You know, does that let people just game the algorithm? There's lots of questions we don't have the answers to. Um, and we'll see if they end up actually making the algorithm open source, if that's just like the, the stated value here. Um, so, but either way, it's a huge step in the right direction. It says scammer bots are number mind blowing how f the feed are full of giveaways. Yeah, so we're talking about bots being a, a thing that he wants to address a lot on Twitter. So it definitely could be something, uh, could be good. So there's lots of theories on what could happen here with Twitter. Um, some people talking about how Twitter could move towards having a token. I think that's probably a farther the speculative end of things, um, but it does it it does like seem possible. I mean, we've seen Doge like pump, right? And that's like people thinking about that. I think one of the prime things there is that Twitter's going to start accepting Doge payments of some kind. We already have you know Bitcoin payments. We already have ETH payments for creators. Um, you know, we've got. Uh, We saw this kind of interesting take here. Uh, this one's pretty, this one's kind of on the edges, but I, I like to entertain the idea. So theory, Elon will try to run Twitter from satellites, no control by any government as SpaceX sits above the local 
internet and as hard to censor as uh, Ukraine has shown. <laughs> the world is changing fast. So wouldn't it be crazy if uh, you know Twitter became a you know decentralized social network and it ran like in space? And we have SpaceX, you know, internet and satellites, and the distributed web lives outside of like <laughs> any jurisdiction. That would be crazy. All right, so let's talk about a potential. Um, let's talk about a potential airdrop coming up here. Um, so, earlier this week, we looked at the acquisition of Jim Finance, or it's not Jim Finance, but uh, Jim from OpenSea. Okay, Jim was an uh, NFT aggregator, and uh, OpenSea basically bought it. And there's lots of theories on what they're gonna do with it. Are they just gonna like shut Jim down? Uh, are they gonna, you know, you know, actually use it to, you know, capture some of the market share? Uh, whenever you know people trying to make trades with competitors uh, within the aggregator. But one big thing people are talking about is like, hey, uh, you know, OpenSea has been a a speculative uh, airdrop for some time. I would talk about airdrops on this channel because it's one of the coolest things about being in the crypto space is if you get in early. Um, to use this technology like I show you how to do in this channel, code with it. Uh, you know, you can get retroactively rewarded, rewarded for doing that. And there's many times people are launching new cryptocurrencies where they're getting, you know, five figure airdrops and more like ten thousand dollars or more just for using technology earlier. Maybe they get it and the price appreciates and then it becomes that, right? So I've been the been the beneficiary recipient of these many, many, many times. And the, there's lots of speculation about who's gonna be next. And OpenSea has been uh, one that lots of people have been watching for potential airdrop. Okay, basically, if you make a trade on OpenSea, then you could be in position for that. And some people said, like, oh, now that they acquired Jim, since Jim has a token, like, hey, they're not going to launch. That the, That was the token. Like, boom, no more no more token. Uh, but Jim Lee developers saying OpenSea acquisition hasn't killed the possibility of a token. So at least that's the that's the follow-up in the press. All right, so speaking of NFTs, let's go ahead and check the chain for today, see what's trending. All right, so I'm actually going to use the, uh, I'm going to check, see what's trending on chain right now. So we've got some NFT projects. We've got a new DeFi strategy popping up here. So some people ask me, what am I checking here? So I'm checking with my app, Blocksite. I've got a link down in the description below. You can check that out if you want to find about these, you know, these opportunities in real time, get alerts, find out what's trending on a daily and hourly basis up to the minutes, okay? Analyze whale wallets, all that type of stuff. But let's just kind of check through to see what some of these projects are that are currently uh, have a significant amount of financial inflows into them. So the first one looks like a new DeFi strategy. Um... Let's just see here. What's the first one? So I'm literally just going to check on this in real time. Uh, I am not doing like advanced due diligence on this stuff. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to get into any of these projects. I'm not holding any of these projects. I'm not trying to pump them. I'm literally just looking at what's happening on chain right now, uh, what's trending. So this looks like an insta-eth strategy. So if I had to guess... Um, just by looking at what's going on here, it's got you know, staked ETH inside of here. It's like a strategy to earn high yield, so it's a DeFi strategy. Uh, looks like it's for InstaDAP. It looks like called the Insta ETH strategy. So InstaDAP um, is like a DeFi dashboard that puts these strategies all together in one place. So that's my guess at what this is. Okay, basically where you could get you know a higher yield on eight on on ETH. Uh, about nine percent annualized. I'm guessing that's what this is. Okay, no, no official uh, thing, but that's that's basically what you do is you use the chain uh, to become a a sleuth essentially and sort of find about these opportunities before they hit social media. Um, you know, before they get you know talked about on Discord. Of course, I'm talking about it now on social media, but that's one of the benefits of using the application is that you can find about this stuff before it goes, you know, up up to that level. So let's see here. Uh, I've also got. Several NFT projects. 
Let's see what's like they're minting right now. Let's just kind of take a look at these and some of the depositors. Let's see, depositors for one hour for. Okay, so what is this one? It's the. Uh, I don't even know how you pronounce this. Tori Zero. <laughs> Tori Zero NFT. So let's see our first virtual idol in blockchain in industry. It's being minted right now. Okay, so let's see here. It's like a bunch of mints. So again, not I'm not recommending necessarily any of these projects. I'm just seeing what is kind of on fire right now. And then let's see here. Another one which is uh Birdie's Kingdom. <laughs> okay, so this looks like a uh metaverse project so digital land being minted right now so it's currently being yeah currently being minted you can see the mint transactions like going crazy <laughs> so it's like this is under a whitelist mint okay so this may be a thing that we're doing a public mint later but that's what's going on right now I'm trying to see yeah, 1.7 million or 1.4 million dollars into the Tory Zero project in the past hour. 3.7 million million in the past one day. Uh, 1 million into the Insta ETH strategy in the past hour. Especially as NFTs are uh, soup are are blowing up. Yeah, they're definitely blowing up like crazy. So yeah, if you want to see uh, these trends happening real time, get real time alerts, all that type of stuff. Uh, before I check these in the live stream, definitely check out the block site link down in the description below. Okay, so let's look at um, let's check on the crypto markets. Um, let's check on the crypto markets, see what's going on here. Uh, you know, yesterday was over the weekend. We definitely had a, some red. Let's see here. Sorry, my, my connection is not pulling this up very quickly. It's like, I was trying to pull up CoinGecko, but it looks like it's like, it's kind of slow on me. I don't know if anybody else is having trouble connecting to CoinGecko. Well, anyways, we'll just pull up TradingView. Uh, so, yeah, basically, you know, um, let's just see here. Did CoinGecko load? No, it did not. We'll just, we'll, we'll look up TradingView. We'll look at the more advanced chart anyway. Um, I was going to check out a kind of a bird's eye view of all crypto markets, but yeah, so Bitcoin, we're still, we're back below $40,000. We're at $39,314 and 68 cents. Okay. Um, you know what? Yeah. So like I said yesterday in the stream, if you were, if you weren't here, uh, basically what's happening with crypto right now, in my opinion, is very much a, a macro problem, not just a crypto problem. Um, I've, I've said repeatedly since the beginning of the year, as long as, you know, stocks and other things were kind of, um, in the toilet. Okay. That I don't, I think that crypto would basically be in the same boat. Uh, cause really what's happening is we're just facing a massive headwind, um, from a macroeconomic perspective. You know, I'm not, I do not claim to be a a macroeconomics expert, macroeconomist macro macro by any stretch of the imagination, but then they get genius to know that uh, inflation has been a problem, uh, that, you know, what's been going on with the monetary policy, uh, you know, becoming more aggressive has, you know, put major headwind for all financial assets, okay? Um, and that, you know, conversely, what we've seen before with loose monetary policy has been, you know, good for, you know, many of these financial assets and that, you know, the imbalance that has been created from a combination of both those things, um, you know, has the, the chickens have come home to roost, put it that way. And so we'll see how long that lasts and how long the pain lasts. Um, but that's, you know, that's what's going on right now. So, um, so let's just take a look here. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at, you know, stocks are red. 
S&P is still down, still negative year to date. All right. Um, you know, had this bounce here. If you look at the Bitcoin price and you look at it on the same like time frame, it basically looks like it's following the same trajectory. All right. It's kind of has these bounces um, in this bearish pattern. Okay. NASDAQ 100, which is pretty closely what, you know, crypto is following, in in which is heavily weighted towards tech. It's doing a really similar thing. Okay. I mean, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin trajectory is going to look, is going to look, uh, let's just pull it up. Is going to look a lot bumpier because it's more volatile. All right. But it's essentially following a very similar type of thing. So, uh, anyways, we have, of course, uh, our red weekly candle here. We started the week. Um, well, you know, we printed a red weekly candle last week. Um, you know, we're getting some red here. Uh, you know, short term, again, I don't, you know, is, is it really anybody's guess as to what's going to happen next? Uh, I think one thing people are watching out for is this sort of trend line breaking down right here um as to what could potentially happen next if things get more bearish than they are now there's there's the counter argument that you know the that crypto like we've already we already hit peak bearishness right that you know uh, how much more bearish can you get than what we've seen so far and that crypto has done okay um and that we're likely just going to consolidate and then you know kind of either just range or slowly grind higher okay um it's really it's really hard to tell. Nobody knows for sure what's going to happen in the short term. But if you're talking about a, a more bearish case and scenarios, watching these moving averages go down, and then watching this support that everybody's been watching, you know, this you know making it a higher low, uh, essentially breaking down, and then you know basically doing that. So um, it's it, it's it's anybody's guess at this point. But you know me. Particular, I mean, I haven't done anything. Of course, I'm not giving you any financial advice, but of course, I've not sold any crypto during this time. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm in this for the long game. Um, you know, looking at what's happening, nothing about my long-term thesis of adoption has changed, okay? I don't see that diminishing by any stretch of the imagination. And my long-term thesis is always as we're creating technology that has these benefits, it gives more pe people a reason to use the technology and that the value can actually increase to that, uh, you know, the value can accrue to the crypto assets themselves because they have sound economics. All right. And so, um, nothing about that's changed despite, you know, things being bearish for now, but it's not just a crypto problem. It's an everybody problem, which can kind of be some solace for what's happening here. I mean, there's, there's just so much that's outside of our control. So, all right, everybody, that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like getting me courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you my blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching.